Hi everyone, this is Katie Groves and this is part 2 of part 35 of my deprogramming series about how I have been systematically deprogramming myself from trauma-based mind control for the last few years. If you've not done so already, I ask that you please watch the first two parts of this series, linked in the description below, for disclaimers and safety measures you can take while watching these videos. In this video, I'm going to be continuing my discussion of self-injury programming and specifically talking about a breakthrough that I just had around it, in which I discovered that not all parts of me who self-injure do so out of programming that is forcing them to, but that some actually have done so out of desire to stop other programs from taking over. I had this experience where we got really activated and some parts tried to fog our mind through fog programming, which is something that I actually talked about in one of my recent videos in this series and which I will put a link to in the description below. These parts, they took over and tried to fog our mind and these other parts, younger parts, were absolutely desperate to stop it. So they came out and started hitting us and squeezing our skin and scratching at us to try and ground us and keep us from switching completely. They used self-harm as a grounding tool. And this was something that I had never seen before when in co-consciousness with self-injuring parts. And I really felt it from these parts' perspective and I could really feel inside the body how much they were trying to stop the fogging and how desperate they were to keep us grounded so that we did not go into whatever other program was going to come out when we did fully fog. And it gave me a ton of appreciation for parts in the past that I have mislabeled as programmed to self-injure when in fact they were trying to stop programming and save us from activation. And I want to be clear that I'm not saying that self-injury programming itself doesn't exist or that I haven't extensively experienced it. I'm just finding that not all cases of self-injury in the system are caused by it. So in this video, I just wanted to share that and I would like to talk a little bit about the differences between the parts who came out to try to stop the FOG program and the parts who actually act out of self-injury programming to kind of highlight how I am identifying any cases of self-injury as one or the other or as something else because I want to be clear that this experience has only made it more apparent to me that there are types of programming that I experience and have experienced that I have not fully understood yet. And so I'm sure that there are probably other cases of self-injury that were caused by other things, perhaps parts simply just coming out and wanting to hurt us because they were having overwhelming emotion that they weren't actually compelled to deal with through self-harm by programming, but just through their own trauma. Like I know that's a huge part of it for a lot of people, and it can be hard to tell the difference between that and programming. But... um. That aside, what I really want to talk about is how to tell, or how I tell, when a part is trying to stop fogging and when a part is trying to actually punish us through self-harm. One of the main things that I noticed was the difference in the kind of verbal abuse. I think I've talked about this before. I think I talked about this in my last video about self-injury programming, but I honestly don't remember. But in case I haven't, I'm going to go over it again. When parts come out to self-harm out of self-injury programming, so out of programming compelling them to hurt us, to punish us, or silence us in some way, that's usually what it is, they often, in our system, verbally assault the parts they are trying to hurt. And they often do so with an extreme amount of rage and sometimes they even sound somewhat demonic. And I'm not saying that I think they're actually demons or demonic in any way or possessed or anything. I just mean they take on the qualities of 
abusers that I've had that would go into rages that really sounded demonic. And so their voices often get raspy. They often scream. For us, we have a tool we are able to use inside when programming comes out most of the time and stop parts from actually loudly screaming but can kind of put a whisper effect on their voices so they can whisper scream. This has been very useful for us and I think we should make a video on it soon because it could be helpful for others. But even though we put the whisper effect on their voices, they still end up somewhat quietly screaming and sounding a lot like our father. This is a common trend. They end up sounding a lot like our father. I've found that a lot of them are interjects of him. So this is very specific. And this is very different from how the parts sounded when they tried to stop the fogging. The parts who tried to stop the fogging sounded a lot more reasonable. While they were desperate and they were angry, they sounded a lot younger. It doesn't mean that they were, they just sounded that way because they weren't acting out of interjects of adults from our childhood, but were instead using their own voices as they weren't actually operating under programming. They were acting of their own will. So they would sound like children and they were saying things like, no, stop, don't do that. There were threats. They did threaten to harm the parts egregiously if they didn't stop, but they kept begging them to stop fogging. And I don't think they much said the word don't fog my mind, the words don't fog my mind, I mean. I think that came up once we actually connected with them and showed them that we understood what they were doing. But until we showed them that we understood what they were doing, they were kind of cryptic in their language and just kept begging the parts to stop. So that's one thing, is I think that once they noticed that the adults in the system were watching them, and were understanding of what they were doing and were safe and were on their side, they felt safer to be more honest in why they were acting the way they were. You can tell them they were trying to conceal their motives. So that's one thing, is that when I connect to parts that are in self-injury programming, showing them that I see them and that I'm safe can actually often lead to more abuse from them because they're so distrustful of safety, because they're so traumatized. And I'm not saying that it doesn't help to be compassionate towards them. It just, they can often get angrier at first. However, when the parts came out to try to stop the fogging, when we connected to them in kindness and compassion because they were a lot freer and a lot less traumatized, they took to that really well and responded well to that and started letting us in more and actually started slightly calming down. So those are a couple of things. The f ones trying to stop the fog, they, um, they were a lot less violent in the verbal abuse overall. Um, there was really no screaming, just begging and some more mild threats compared to what self-injury programmed parts usually do. So I just want to be clear that this is just some things that I observed, and these are just from small samples of systems. I have had extensive experience with the self-injury programmed parts, but the parts trying to stop fog, this is new for me. And I've actually since extensively worked with those parts to try and help them find better tools for coping when this happens. And nothing like this has happened since. So I'm really hoping that this will not persist, and it really seems honestly like my problems with the hitting and the biting that I've experienced so much from child parts have stopped regardless of whatever motivations they may have had. So it really seems like what I've been doing is working, and I just want to put out there to anybody who's struggling with deprogramming, I hope that you are able to remember that this is an ongoing process one that is extremely challenging and that if you are having a hard time 
that does not mean that you are doing a poor job. For us, we have been doing this for, I think, four and a half years now with success, and we've been trying pretty much our whole lives. So this is not something that happens quickly, happens overnight for most people. For most people, this is a really long-term process, one that's really difficult, and I just want people to know that if you're struggling, you have my empathy, you have my support, and you have my understanding. I don't think that there is a timeline on deprogramming and how long it's supposed to take, and... While I would love for it to just be over for myself and for everyone struggling, that's just not how it is. So the more empathy and the more compassion that you can have for yourself, I would say the better. Thanks.